Okay, so we are ready to begin talking about decisions in Python, uh, basically like if-else structures. And this is an easy topic, in my opinion, because our brains do this naturally all the time. We're constantly in decision mode every waking moment, whether we realize it or not. So, for example, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. And if not, I'm not going to eat, or try not to at least. Uh, if I have class today, I'm going to get to campus. If I have a test tomorrow, I'm going to study or else I'll kick back and watch TV or whatever. So um, we're constantly modulating our behavior based on some condition. Okay, so the trick is here uh, when coding is to translate that logic to code. And it's really just syntax when it comes down to it. So we'll take a look. Um, I have a, just a short little program, which is a game, which I'm calling Lucky 7. It's just a dice game. And the user gets two rolls. I'll show you how to do a random number here in Python and get two random die rolls. And then if we add those two dice together and get seven, that's a win. Or else it's a loss. Okay, so I ran it. I have some e emojis in here too. Um, but I ran the game and I won. Okay, let me run it again. I probably won't win. Okay, so most of the time I am going to lose. But every now and then I'll get the, the lucky seven. So this is um, just a very simple program. Um, I've At the top here, I have this import statement. I had to import the random library uh, because I am going to be using that to roll the dice. OK, so this is just a print statement with the, di the dice emojis that you saw. And um, here we go. These are the random numbers. So the random object has this rand int function or this randint method, I should say. And, you know, this is very useful. If I, This will just generate a random integer between the numbers I give it. So because it's a die, I want it to be between 1 and 6. So I just put 1 comma 6, and that'll get me some random die roll. So I have die 1 and die 2 that I'm treating that way. So I end up with two rolls. I'll add them together and put the result in the total variable. Okay, so now we get into the decision structure here. If the total is equal to 7, look at that double equal sign. That's how you express equality in Python. A lot of languages are like this. It's hard to get used to if you're not used to it. So you need to be really careful about that. Um, see, you know, like we, we have had the single equal sign already, okay, in our programs, but that means something completely different. That means assignment. You know, that, Variable assignment. Okay, it means take assign the value of this of assign this variable the value on the right hand side. Okay, so the value is added up to whatever the total of the dice are is, and um, that value is assigned to that total variable. Okay, that's different from equality. Is the value in the total variable the same as? It's a, equality is like asking a question. Is this the same as that? Okay, it's different. So we have the double equal sign to express equality in Python. Difficult to get used to, so try to keep an eye on yourself. Uh, another, for me at least, coming from other languages, the colon after the if clause and the, and the, elf, the else clause as well, that colon there is really hard for, for me to get used to, at least. You might not have the same problem if you're newer to programming and, you know, you don't have all these other languages, all this other syntax kind of um, burned in your brain. But um, in any case, you know, I, I forget that a lot, and you might too. So there you go. So, I mean, it's really just very simple, black and white situation. Either the total is equal to 7 or it's not. If it's equal to 7, they win. I display the congratulations message. Um, or else, they lose. Okay. One thing I'll mention before I end this video, and I, don't, I didn't see this in your book, um, but um, it's probably a better programming practice to put the more likely scenario at the top of your if structure. So probably a better way to code this would be, because I mean, it's, it's unlikely to be 7. Okay, um, the, probably the better way would be to reverse this. Okay, so I'll say if total is not equal to 7, I'm going to tell them that they lose. 
or else I'm going to tell them that they won. So now I put the more likely scenario at the top. And you know, the reason for that is when you're, and, and it's not a big deal, especially in this program where it's just like, you know, the, the whole structure is only like four lines of code really. But um, you know, if you have a really long if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if it's a really long uh, if structure with lots of different avenues of execution and lots of different possibilities, when this compiles and runs, it's it's looking for a match. It's looking for a true. It's looking for a hit. And like if it finds the true at the top, it's like boom, it executes that layer or that block um, as uh, as we would call it. And then it skips the rest. Okay. Now if you have the most likely scenario at the bottom, then it's kind of visiting every condition, taking a little bit of processor time every time it assesses a condition, true or false, it's false, it's false, it's false, it's false, and then finally it finds the true at the bottom. So it's better practice to put the more likely scenario up at the top. Um, I'm, that's not something I would grade on at this point, but um, it is something that you can kind of keep in the back of your mind. Oh, and another thing, I can't believe I, I almost forgot this. In Python, spacing matters, okay? Indentation matters. So when you begin an, an if structure, you choose an, like an, uh, a way to indent. Like here I've done four spaces. Your book re recommends four spaces. It doesn't really matter how many, but you know, we'll, we'll use your book recommendation here in this program. And so the, you have to, like that four spaces has got to be consistent throughout the structure. Okay. You can't do something like this. One space on one and, you know, four spaces on the other. That's not going to work. Uh, so pick something and be consistent. And, uh, yeah, that's it for this video. And then we'll move on to another one.